My name is Sean Farrell, and today I'll be talking to you about lines in the coordinate plane. Now, this is part of our series on geometry, so if you haven't looked at the other videos, then you probably should. And yeah, if you have, then let's get right into it. So a slope of a line, what's the slope going to be? Well, the slope is a very important characteristic that we use to describe lines, and it's basically going to tell us which direction the line is going in. And we calculate the slope by dividing the rise over the run. So how do we find the run? Well, basically, we take any two points on the, on the line. So in this diagram, we have x, x1 and y1. And to calculate the rise, we take y2 and we subtract y1 from it. So you could also think of this as the vertical distance between the two points. Good. Now for the run, we do the same thing, except with x2 and y, x1. So x2 minus x1 would be the run. And we would think of that as the horizontal distance between the two points. And we represent the slope using the letter m. And remember, you can take any two points and the answer would be the same. So we can think of this as a ratio of some sort, the ratio of rise to run. All right, so here's an exercise for you. Uh, could, you find this, could you find the slopes of all of these lines here in this diagram right here? I'll give you a minute. So hopefully you've got all the answers, but if you haven't, we'll do them together. So the slope of line A is going to be 4 over 3. So our rise is going to be 7 minus 3, because our first set of coordinates here is going to be 2, 3, and our second set of coordinates is going to be 5, 7. So our y, y2 is going to be 7, and our y1 is going to be 3. So y2 minus y1 is 7 minus 3, which is 4. So that's our rise. That's our vertical distance. It's going to be four, one, two, three, four. And so our horizontal distance, we can count it, but we can also calculate it. So our horizontal distance, x2 is five, x1 is two. So five minus two is three. And we can also count that one, two, three. That's our horizontal distance. And yep, so our slope is four over three, rise over run. That's the slope of line A. Okay, good. So what about line B? Well, line B, we have our two points here, four, negative two, and negative one and two. So y2 minus y1, that's going to be our rise, is going to be 2 minus negative 2. So that's 4. And for our run, we're going to have negative 1 minus 4. So negative 1 here is our x2, and 4 is our x1. So negative 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 5. So our end result, our slope of line b, is going to be negative 4 over 5. The result, our slope of line b, is going to be negative 4 over 5. Okay, good. So if, how about line C? Well, line C, we have our two points, 1 and 7, and 5, 7. So x1, sorry, y2 minus y1 is going to be 7 minus 7, which is 0. And when your numerator, nu, well, when your numerator is 0, the rest of the fraction simplifies to 0. Okay. And finally, for line D, we have our two points. We, we have 4, negative 2, and 4, 0. So for our numerator, 0 minus minus 2, that's our y2 minus y1. So 0 minus negative 2, that's 2. And for our denominator, 4 minus 4, our x2 minus x1 is 4 minus 4. And when your, new, when your denominator is 0, then your fraction is undefined. So the slope of line m, sorry, the slope of line d is going to be undefined. And this is true for any vertical line in the, in the coordinate plane, no matter where it is. Okay, good. So you just saw in that problem back there that a positive slope indicates that the line rises from left to right. So yeah, in this diagram here, you can see that it rises from left to right. And a negative slope indicates the opposite. It falls from left to right. So it goes down. So when your slope is negative, it goes down like that, from left to right. And a slope of zero, you saw that earlier too, in line C, in that question back there, yeah. Line C slope is zero, and that's true for every horizontal line in, this, in the coordinate plane. Their slope is going to be zero. They have no slope, they're a flat line. And finally, an undefined slope indicates that the line is vertical. So if the, it's a vertical line, it has an undefined slope. 
That's true for every vertical line in the coordinate plane. Okay, good. So linear equations, these are equations that we can use to represent uh, lines in the coordinate plane. Now each line has one linear equation, and each linear equation represents one line. And when you know the equation of a line, you can graph it onto the coordinate plane. So linear equations, so linear equations, uh, linear equations are going to be equations that represent a line. And each line is going to have one linear equation, and each linear equation is going to have one line. And so when you know the equation of a line, you can graph it onto the coordinate plane. And so linear equations can have different forms. For example, the slope-intercept form, we're going to use the slope and the y-intercept to represent a line. So we would write this out as y equals m, and we would replace m with the slope x plus b, and we would replace b with the y-intercept. And yeah, that's the slope-intercept form. So point-slope form, this is going to be when we have a point that the line passes through and the slope. So y minus y1, y1 is going to be the y-coordinate of the coordinate that we have that the line passes through, equals m, that's going to represent our slope, parentheses x minus x1, where x1 is the x-coordinate of the coordinate that the line passes through. So we can graph a line when we have the linear equation of that line. So an example here, this one's in point-slope, sorry, this one's in slope-intercept form, we have y equals 2x plus 3. So the 2, in this case, substitutes the m, and, and the 3 substitutes the y-intercept. So once we have the y-intercept and the slope, we can graph a line. So first, we know that the y-intercept is at 3. So we look on the y-axis, and we know that 3 is right here. So that's our first point. And since we know the slope, we can find another point on the line. We go rise over run. So rise over the run would be 2. So 2, 1. 2 over 1. So our rise would be 2, and our run would be 1. So we go up 1, that's our rise, and we go over 1, that's our run. So there's another point for you, that's another point on the coordinate plane. And so once we have two points, we can, dr we can draw a line that goes through those two points. All you need is two points to draw a line. And so that's our line right there. So that's how you graph a linear equation when it's in slope-intercept form. And yeah, here's another example for you. This one's in... Okay, good. So here's another example for you. Uh, this one right here, this is in point-slope form. And so we know that it's in point-slope form because it follows this format right here. So our x1, that's going to be our x-coordinate, is going to be negative 3 because x minus minus 3 is x plus 3. So our x-coordinate is negative 3. And our y-coordinate right here, it replaces y1. It's our y-coordinate is going to be 1. So we know that there's a point on the line that's going to be at negative 3, 1. So that's our first point. And we also have the slope here, which is negative 1 over 2. And we, we can think of that in terms of rise over run. And the rise would be 1, and the run would be negative 2. You could do it the other way around. You could put the negative sign on the, on the rise if you wanted. It wouldn't change the result. And yeah, so we have our slope. So we go over one, we go, sorry, we go up one, that's our rise, and we go to the left, two, that's gonna be our negative two. And there's another point right there, that means there's gonna be another point right there, that's also gonna be on the line, so we have two points, and we can draw a line through that. And that's all we need, that's how we graph linear equations using point-slope form. Okay, good, let's see if you can graph these lines yourself. So you take these two lines, y plus two equals four parentheses x minus one, and 3x plus 3y equals 6, and see if you can graph them onto this coordinate plane here. Uh, don't draw on your computer, get a separate sheet of paper if you have one, and if you don't, you can listen to me later. And yeah, so if you're going to work that out, I'll give you a minute. Okay, good. So hopefully uh, you've graphed those lines onto your sheet of paper. And if you haven't, that's okay, we can do these together. So the line for the first one, let's, here's our format here. So the line for the first one, oh, sorry, wait, 
yeah, okay, we can leave that. So the line for the first one is gonna look like this. So our point here, it's in point slope form. So remember this one right here, this negative, this, sorry, this one is gonna be our x1. And this negative two, because y minus minus two is y plus two. So negative two is gonna be our y1. So that's our point. Our point is one, negative two. So if we find one negative two right here, this is gonna be our first point. And since the slope is four, we go up one, our rise, over our run, which is one. So four over one is gonna be four. That's our slope. So we go up one and, sorry, we go up four and over one, that's gonna be our slope. And so we have two points, we can graph a line. And okay, good. So for this one, you have to move things around a bit. So three X plus three Y equals six. That becomes three Y equals negative three X plus six. And that simplifies into Y equals negative X plus two. And so that's easy, you can graph it like that. So we know because our B here, our Y intercept is two in this equation here. So two, our line intercepts the Y axis at two. And we know that the slope is negative one. So negative one, we go over one and down one. So one over negative one, rise over run. That's gonna look like that. And so those are our two points and we can graph a line through it and it looks like that. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about writing equations of lines given a description of a line. So for example here, what is an equation of a line with slope three and y intercept of five? So clearly we're supposed to use the slope intercept form. So that's y equals mx plus b. Okay, now we're gonna talk about writing equations using a description of a line. So for example here, what is an equation of a line with slope three and y intercept of negative five? Well, we're clearly supposed to use the slope intercept form. So that's gonna be y equals mx plus b. So m would be our slope, and m we can replace with three because we know the slope is three. mx, three x plus b. b is our y-intercept. So b is gonna be negative five because it says so right here. So we just replace m with three and b with negative five, and we get y equals three x plus five. That's gonna be our equation for this line right here that we just described. Okay, good. Uh, can you do this by yourself? Hopefully you can, but if you can't, we can do it together later. I'll give you a minute. So hopefully you've got that, but if you haven't, we'll do it together. So we have a point and we have a slope. So we're clearly supposed to use point slope form. So x1, this is our x of the point here. Our x1 is negative one. And so we replace x1 with negative one. And our y1 is gonna be five because it's the y value of the uh, coordinate that we're given. So y1, we replace that with five. And finally, we have our slope, which is two and we replace m with two because m is our slope. So if you, at the end you calculate everything, simplify, and you get y minus five equals two, parentheses, x plus one. And that's our equation. That's the equation of the line that goes through negative one, five with slope two. Okay, good. And so could you find an equation for this line? Here, you can do this yourself. You can think about it. How would you find an equation for this line? you've got that but if you haven't we can do it together so first what you would need to do is calculate the slope and we do that by rise over run so this is our first set of coordinates here negative 2 negative 1 and our second set of coordinates here is 3 5 
So y2 is going to be 5 and y1 is going to be negative 1. So y2 minus y1, that would be, what is that? 5 minus, that, that's 6. And that took me an embarrassingly long time. <laughs> Okay, and we do the same thing for x2 and x1. So x2 is 3 and x1 is negative 2. So 3 minus minus 2 is 5. So our slope is 6 over 5. Okay, great. So that's our m. And so this is what we have so far uh, if we do it in point slope form. So y minus y1, we don't know y1 yet, equals 6 over 5. That's our m, 6 over 5, parentheses x minus x2. That's supposed to be an x1, sorry. Uh, just pretend it's an x1. Okay, good, so we have that. Now the one thing we need now is a set of coordinates. So here we choose to use 3, 5, but really you could use negative 2, negative 1 if you wanted to, you'd get the same result. So y minus 5, that's our y2, our y2, sorry, our y1, y minus y1, y1 is gonna be replaced by 5. And 6 over 5, that's our slope, parentheses, x minus 3. 3 is our x1. And so when we replace everything, we end up with this. This is our equation. y minus 5 equals 6 over 5, parentheses, x minus 3. Okay, so equations of horizontal and vertical lines, we, we touched upon this briefly earlier. So horizontal lines are going to be represented with y equals k, where k is the y of any point on the line. So y is gonna be the same for any point on the line, and you can just take one of them and you put them, put it into k. So y equals whatever number, and that's gonna represent a horizontal line. And you do the same thing for vertical lines, except instead of y, it's gonna be x, because all the x's are gonna be the same for every point on the line, on the vertical line. And so let's look at some examples. So for this one, our vertical line here, it's going to be represented with the equation x equals negative 2 because for all of the points on the on this line all the coordinates all of their x's are going to be negative 2 and the same concept applies to this horizontal line here so this one's going to be represented with y equals 3 and if you look at it it just goes through all the points where y the y value is 3 so the y coordinate is going to be 3 at all of these points and yeah the equation for that is y equals 3 Okay, so here's a practice problem for you. What are the equations for the vertical and horizontal lines passing through 2, 4? I'll give you a moment. Okay, so hopefully you have all the answers, but if you don't, let's do it together. So for the horizontal line, the equation is going to be y equals 4, because it passes through here. And all its, all its y values are going to be 4, because we know that one of them is 4, therefore all of them are 4. Okay, and the same concept applies to the vertical line here. The vertical line passes through to 4, which means that all of its points are going to, all of its x-coordinates are going to be 2. So we'd represent that using the equation x equals 2. And okay, to summarize, the slope of a line denotes its direction and is usually represented with the letter m. And slope is calculated by dividing rise over run. And lines with positive slopes rise to the right, while lines with negative slopes fall to the right. And horizontal lines have slopes of 0, and vertical lines have undefined slopes. Linear equations represent a single line and can be written in different forms, such as point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1, and slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. And lines can be graphed given two points on that line, and equations of a line can be found by substituting elements, such as points, slope, y-intercept of the line, into the appropriate equation form. And horizontal lines can be represented with the equation y equals k, where k is the y value of any point on the line, and vertical lines can be represented with the equation x equals k, where k is the x value of any point on the line. And that's it. That's the end of today's video. Thank you for coming to today's lecture, and I hope to see you in future videos.